how's everyone doing? I'm going to be doing the movie tag uh, response that's going around right now. It's a, a movie tag. There's 10 questions. And I was tagged by the visual expression in Leroy Green 85 so thank you very much for tagging me, guys. I really do appreciate it. It's cool to be part of this. And if you haven't checked out the visual expression or Leroy Green 85 definitely go do so. I'll put the links down below for both of them. Really cool people. Uh, they do Blu-ray DVD updates, things like that. And very nice people. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen one of these tags uh, going around. I know there was one kind of recently, but before that there was like kind of a, a drought of the tags. Uh, when I first started making videos on YouTube like years ago, there was like tags like all the time. So it's cool to see people getting more involved in the community as well on here and uh, getting that sense of community pride back and getting everybody involved. I like that. And uh, I just kind of woke up so I'm a little bit disheveled, so I uh, don't mind that. Uh, my crazy hair. Um, but yeah, 10 questions. And uh, at the end of this, I'm going to tag everybody. So, you know, if you see this video, I want a response. Leave me a video response or comment down below. There you go. I'm tagging everybody. Get, get everybody involved. There you go. Uh, but there's 10 questions. And I'm just going to look at uh, Jordan's video over here uh, where he has the, uh, the questions lined up in uh, the video description box. I don't know who started this tag, so props to whoever started it. Yeah, the first question is, what film would you grab if you want to watch a tearjerker? Now, I'll be honest, there's not many uh, movies that I've cried at during or uh, watching. Uh, I actually did a video years ago that I just never uploaded, the top five movies uh, that I cried at or something something like that. I can't remember the exact title I put for it. Uh, top five movies that made me cry. There you go, that's probably what it is, the top five movies that made me cry. Uh, but there, a lot of those ones were when I was younger, like E.T., uh, when I was younger, Mac and Me is the same kind of thing. and. I don't know, just different ones like that. Bambi, when I was like a little, little kid. Uh, but the ones when I was an adult, um, there really aren't too many. The one that I can think of uh, was Blow, the movie Blow with Johnny Depp. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I was involved in some, you know, different activities that weren't good for me. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, and I knew people that were doing certain things, and they were getting arrested and things like that. And just that movie kind of just made me... You know, just think of things and open my eyes to a lot of things. And I remember that year, 2001, was just a great year uh, for movies and great year in my life as well. Uh, but when I watched that movie, I was just really affected by it, especially the ending of it. It was just so tragic to me that I was, you know, I, I went back home to my, I was living in my fraternity house at that time. Yikes, you're going to know how old I am now. I'm old. Old sauce. But I went to my, my fraternity house. I, I was dating this girl, dating on and off for four and a half years. She drove and she dropped me off to my fraternity house and uh, I remember going to the quad which was empty at the time and I was just, ca I called up my best friend I was just like crying on the phone. I was just like, oh man, because it really got to me. You know, at the end of the day, he was basically screwed over by everybody in his life except for his father, especially all the females in his life too, really royally screwed him over. And I'm a big Penelope Cruz fan, oh, so it's hard for me to, but she played that role perfectly. It was hard for me to dislike her, but that role, you know, you have to dislike her in that. Uh, but still, mwah, muy picante, love it. Uh, but anyways, let me get back to this before I, you know, go off another tangent. The ending of that movie just really got to me, the fact that he went to prison and he made a promise to his little daughter that, you know, he would see her and he was never able to see her again and she never went to visit him in prison and uh, it's just that that just broke my heart you know he's having that that dream uh that you know he's visiting his daughter and his daughter's coming to see him in jail but then he like wakes up and realizes it was just a dream and he never gets to see her ever and that was based on like a true story i think that guy st he might i don't know if he is now but at the time he was still alive and still in prison yeah so that was just a tragic one that made me you know kind of well up a little bit with tears and it just got to me the whole thing and kind of you know maybe just kind of changed my views I was doing certain things that just weren't good and hanging out with the wrong people and just yeah bad activities and it just kind of made me realize that it's not the life that I want not uh it's not nothing cool about it quick money isn't good and in the long run you're gonna miss out on family you're gonna miss out on real opportunities that really mean the most to you and I'm just rambling like crazy let's go on to question number two but yeah that's blow Johnny Depp with Blondie Johnny Depp in Blue. Uh, number two, of all the films you own, which is your favorite or favorite edition? My favorite movie is, I'll have this right here, John Carpenter's The Thing, which I actually watched, uh, I was on TV IFC uh, recently, and I sat down and watched it, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Either way, love the heck out of this movie. I never get tired of watching it. I was able to get this signed by John Carpenter, so very cool. My all-time favorite movie. 
Uh, as far as my favorite additions, let's take a walk. Take a walk with me. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, here's my closet right here. Um, this one right here is one of my favorite additions. It's my Sleepaway Camp Survival uh, Red Cross edition right there. Uh, it's all signed up by a bunch of different people involved with the film. And then this one is probably one of my most rarer or one of my rarer ones. Not most rarer. Rarer ones. Rarer, 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 rarer. Uh, it's one of my rarest editions. There you go, rarest editions. And it's the Suspiria and Deep Red uh, Ultimate Collection box set from Japan. And it's a heat box. If you put your hand on it, it will, uh, after a little bit of time, it will, let me see if I can do it real quick. It'll reveal a secret image underneath. Uh, let me do a little bit more. It's worth it, I promise. I'm kind of like leaning over stuff right now. I don't know. You can't really. You can get. A, you see. I don't know if you can see that eye right there. You see that eye? And I'll do it one more quick second. I hope you guys don't mind. Here's some cool stuff. There's a uh, Ray Harryhausen signed Mexican lobby card for Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Ray Harryhausen recently passed away. There's the signature right there. If I go like that real quick, you'll see. Uh, you can kind of. I don't know. It's probably not a good angle either, but you can, there's an eye right there, there's some other stuff. And also, I will go ahead and show this, it's one of my favorite dishes, one of my favorite movies, and it's the VHS for It's a Wonderful Life, signed by James Stewart right there. Uh, this was signed right before he passed away, I think it might have been like a year before he passed away, he was doing a book signing, um, I think, I'm not sure if it was a cookbook or what it was exactly, but but yeah, really happy to have that, love that movie. Uh, but that edition right there is really cool, the heat box edition. I'm going to do a proper video for that soon. I haven't, and I need to. But yeah, all kinds of different, uh, my Raging Bull, Jack, uh, Jake LaMotta, um, signed boxing glove right there. Pretty cool. Alright, and uh, I'll show you a couple more. Uh, the Watchmen, Amazon exclusive Night Owl ship. I love that movie, love that edition. I read the comic books when I was growing up. Really cool edition. And the Twilight Zone, uh, the definitive complete collection right there complete definitive collection love that show love that that set and uh, I would have to say the plan of the apes ones because I love those movies and I love sci-fi and uh, oh, the Stewie hits cool I like family guy um, Futurama sets cool I don't know different different there's a few of my favorite editions all right let's put this back over here Let's see if we can get that right angle again. Bang, there it is. Oh! Computer chairs, slippery slides. All right, uh, what film character would you want as a best bud? Huh, that's kind of hard. Maybe uh, somebody like Machete and kick some butt for you. Uh, maybe somebody like uh, Chainsaw from Summer School. That was kind of a fun experience. Um, I would want somebody smart, somebody tough, somebody has got, you know, is willing to be your boy, be there for you. Bruce Willis and The Last Boy Scout or Die Hard or something like that, somebody, you know, can kick some butt for you, have your back, something like that, a good true friend. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I don't know, there you go, just some ideas thrown out there. Uh, number four is film you would recommend, huh? Well, I have over here, I was, if you follow my Facebook, uh, I was doing my uh, top ten underrated horror movies on Blu-ray, which I'm going to do that video soon. I'm kind of slacking on that. Um, I was trying to find a spot for one one of the last spots. Uh, but I'll go. if you don't follow my Facebook fade page, go do so. Because I put a lot of stuff on there way before I do stuff on YouTube. Uh, good times. <laughs> but I'll just go ahead and show you a few on the list uh, for uh, horror movies that I think are underrated. Because obviously, you know, movies you would recommend. A lot of the ones are ones that people have already seen before, so I'm going to do some ones that are maybe underrated. Uh, Horror Express right here, love this movie. Uh, great cast too, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Telly Savalas. And uh, again, it's just a, a very underrated movie in my opinion. Uh, I love, this is set on a train, and I love movies set in somewhere where you feel like you're isolated, you can't escape. The train is one of those things, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of snow going on, and then the... I, I, there's, there's different aspects going on. I just feel like this is super underrated. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show uh, Trick or Treat, a great horror anthology movie. Um, I recently saw a couple uh, low-budget horror movies that I think are underrated. Zombie A-Hole by Dustin Mills. I thought that was a lot of fun. Mold, which is kind of has like an 80s feel to it, but it's like it's really low-budget. It's 
slimy and I, don't know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, here's one that I think is really underrated and it's a post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic movie. It's called Hell. It's a German film and it's really just dark and dreary and uh, basically um, the Earth's atmosphere uh, starts getting messed up and it becomes uh, super hot. Uh, it goes up, temperature goes up like, I don't know, 10 degrees or 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, you know, if it's like normally in the fall, it'll be like, I don't know, 60s. It's now in like, I don't know, 90s or something crazy like that. So in the summertime, it's just ridiculous and all the crops have gone away and all the animals have been killed and it's just dirty and dingy and I love it. And I did a full movie review for it. So if you want to see that, click right here. Um, Splinter's underrated right there. Just totally creepy, atmospheric. Uh, Kind of, and it's not really a creature feature, but it's like this organism, and I don't know, I like the contortionist movements and everything. Um, I thought Babysitter Wanted was really underrated as well. Um, I have a whole list for, like, underrated uh, movies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust out a whole bunch of, like, underrated different genre uh, specific videos coming up soon, so look out for that. And one that I think is uh, kind of underrated, doesn't get enough love, is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's Vanilla Sky. It's a remake of Open Your Eyes. Uh, but I think Vanilla Sky really is a vast improvement on Open Your Eyes. It really expands the ideas, uh, especially for the character of Sophia, played by Penelope Cruz in both movies. And you can just see there's a big difference. Uh, Sophia's character in uh, Vanilla Sky is just really expanded and fantastic. The cinematography... It's just incredible in Vanilla Sky, the, the score, the soundtrack, just... That's the first time I came uh, across the Sigur Ross, which is an Icelandic band, love their music. Perfect for that movie as well. Uh, the acting, uh, just, just everything about Vanilla Sky was just amazing. It was just very surreal and just trippy and dream... I, it was dreamlike as well, and I remember seeing it in the theaters, and I was dating this, that same girl that I saw Blow with, by the way. And we were going through like a little rough patch, and... Uh, we just, in the movie theater, uh, like a lot of people didn't seem to get it, but we totally got the message and it was, it kind of meant something to us as well, so it was kind of a special thing. And it always kind of brings me back to the, that time period as well, so when I watch that movie, I kind of think of that time period. It always has a special place in my heart, and for me, that movie is a visual masterpiece. It's a masterpiece overall in just every sense. The writing, the cinematography, the, like I said, the soundtrack, uh, just, it's just such a fantastic film. Love that one. So I think that's super underrated. A lot of people kind of, I feel like they unfairly bash it. It's kind of like a, a bias against Hollywood remakes, against Cameron Crowe, against Tom Cruise, against a lot of things. And that is one that should be given a fair chance, in my opinion. All right, anyways, I'm totally rambling. This is going to be a super long video. I'm very sorry. I love you all. Love your faces. Who's the guy that says that on here? Philip DeFranco? SXE Phil? I think he's the one that did it. I haven't seen his videos in ages, though. I heard he, like, uh, sold his channel or something. Or Anyways, that's not important. Totally... All right, uh, number five, uh, character with the best fashion sense. Who made this video tag? I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, Ryan Gosling and um, uh, I know Visual Expression said the same thing, and that's the, the first thing that popped to my mind. Uh, the recent romantic comedy movie, Crazy Stupid Love. Ryan Gosling in that one, his sense of style in that one. Oh, you know what? If I can go back to. Uh, character you would want as your best bud, Ryan Gosling in uh, Crazy Stupid Love, because he was just really looking out for Steve Carell. He was, you know, helping him get back out in the dating world, uh, you know, giving him some fashion tips, how to deal with girls and stuff like that. He just, and he also had his back, too, with Kevin Bacon, and I don't know, it just seemed like a dude you'd want to chill with, you know? And uh, seemed like a good, good friend, except for when he was hooking up with Steve Carell's daughter. That's where that ends. Uh, I don't have any kids that I know of. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't want my best friend doing that if I had a kid or daughter, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, he had good fashion sense as well. He was pimping in it. You know, he's got the dress, dressed up look. I remember back in the day, I was actually just talking about this with this girl I was hanging out with. And uh, she's like, oh, I have great fashion sense. Like, you look like Peg Bundy. Peg Bundy. You were wearing some, like, leopard print fucking spandex stuff. Oh, I, I curse. Sorry. I rarely ever curse on these videos. Uh, <laughs> I try not to curse streamers, but she's wearing like this spandex leather. Like, you look like Peg Bundy. Stop that. You don't have any fashion sense. And, you know, I rock the polos, and I think polos are just... I rock polos all the time. I think polos are just... Uh, I'm not right now. They're, they're classic. They're timeless. Polos are always in style. If you, you pick up whatever fancy entertainment magazine, you always see 
the celebrity dudes rocking polo shirts or dress shirts. And those are usually my two things that I rock a lot of. Um, but I remember back in the day when I was living in my fraternity house, we'd all go out to the bars or go club, and we'd all get like metro metrosexualed up. We'd get the hair gel rocking, cologne, you know, get the little uh, dress shoes going, dress slacks, dress shirt, get all pimped out. Um, we were never uh, well. There were some some of the dudes where I wasn't. Some of the dudes were like super metrosexual. They put on like facial cream and crap. I'm not down with that. But that's that's too much. Hair gel, cologne, and some some dress clothes. That's 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 it. Where I draw the line. Where, where am I at here? Where am I getting? Oh, the best fashion sense. Maybe Ten Meadows and Ladies Man as well. Is something out there? Throwing that out there? I don't know. Just some fun stuff like that. Um, most inspirational film? Now, I know Visual Expression said Rudy, and that was going to be like probably like number two on my list. But my number one inspirational movie would be It's a Wonderful Life, which is also AFI's most number one most inspirational movie. And I just think that movie was just really touching. You know, everybody goes through hard times, but it just, you know, you don't want to end your life. Your life is worth something. You always have somebody in your life that cares about you and that loves you. And uh, yeah, it just makes you really appreciate life in general. And that movie is just is all, one of my all-time favorite movies. It's just a very touching movie. You know, I absolutely love that one. If you haven't seen that one, check out It's a Wonderful Life, because I know a lot of people haven't, which shocks me um you know obviously it's a christmas quintessential christmas movie uh, but it's also just very inspiring and touching and uh, emotional love that movie all right uh that was number six number seven is a movie with the kind of life you would want to live now some people were saying indiana jones and stuff like that and uh, back to the future kind of i thought was kind of a cool aspect but you know what? honestly i'm a simple kind of guy i like things just relaxed and chill uh i would have to say kevin costner's character in field of dreams i just love the look of that field. First of all, I love baseball. Uh, I also, you know, I, would, I always wanted to live on a farm, you know, grow your own food and stuff like that. But of course, he, his cornfield, he tore down the cornfield to make a baseball field. He still had some of the corn stalks left, but I just love the family. He had a, you know, he had a nice family and his wife. I just love the wife character in that. She stood by her man. She was smart. She was intelligent. They're at like the school PTA meeting. She's standing up for the different books and things like that. And I don't know, she was strong willed. She stood by her man. She believed in her man. And it was, everything was just very simple. It was a simple life. It was just a happy life. Uh, you know, of course, he was like, if you built it, we will come. And, you know, he did the whole journey with uh, James Earl Jones. I just That movie is, again, one of my all-time favorite movies. It gets me goosebumps every time I watch it. Love that movie. It's just a, I, I like the aspect of, you know, living on the farm in Iowa. Not necessarily Iowa, but anywhere, anywhere really. Um, and just having that family life. That's really what it comes down to. Not some kind of fantasy world where you're, you know, an adventurer, explorer, and you're, you know, doing all kinds of crazy things. Temple of Doom and, you know, I'm trying to find different artifacts and the Holy Grail and this and that. Something simple where you, you have a happy family life because that's really what matters most in my opinion. And that's what I would want. Anyways, uh, what are we on here? Number eight. Eight is great. Films you can watch over and over. Now, actually, this is a an old notebook I have right here. And I had, like, tons of video ideas in here. Just tons. This whole thing is just filled with uh, different video ideas. I don't know, what is this, top 10 foreign slasher movies, uh, top 10 infected movies, top 10 animal creature movies, top 10 slashers of the past decade, uh, just top some comedic actors, just all kinds of different things in here. Uh, but one of the ones I, ones was the, one of the video topics I did on here, wrote down was top 10 rewatchable movies. And that just kind of went on a rant here, uh, or coming up with more movies so I did top 20, top 50 uh, but I'll just go through a few of these ones that I have on my list right here uh, I need to actually sit down and do some of these videos because this notebook is filled like some of the ones on the, the pages on the back too front to back uh, but here's top 10 rewatchable movies or top 20, top whatever I'm going to just go through a whole list of them some of my top favorite rewatchable movies that I can watch over and over again Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, Beetlejuice, Adventures in Babysitting Princess Bride, Predator, uh, 40 Year Old Virgin, Superbad, John Carpenter's The Thing um, the original Star Wars trilogy National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation The Story of Ricky, which is crazy and over the top Christmas Story, uh, Pulp Fiction, T2, The Last Boy Scout, Spaceballs, Groundhog Day, Sandlot, The Real Genius, Goonies, Aliens, Force Gump, Die Hard, Caddyshack, Stand By Me, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Wet Hot American Summer, Aladdin, Summer School, love that movie, Mallrats, Longest Yard, uh, Young Frankenstein, Breakfast Club, Truman Show, Hatchet, uh, Big, Home Alone, Gremlins, Heat, Bronx Tale, Road Trip, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Big Trouble in Little China, Blood Diner, Last of the Mohicans, uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, original and the remake. Uh, I love them both for different reasons. Zombieland, which is a fun, I feel like that's a great date movie, Zombieland. 
Return of the Living Dead is just so fun. Uh, Sin City, Field of Dreams, Fight Club, American Psycho. Uh, yeah, those are just a few of the ones I have on my list here. And uh, this is going to be a super long video, and I apologize. Uh, -da 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 -da. Where do you buy your movies? Uh, mostly online. A lot of the video stores around here have closed down. There's no video stores like uh, Blockbuster or anything like that. That was the last one. Uh, but there's a Best Buy not too far away, but my Best Buy kind of stinks. You know, I live in a highly populated area. I live in New Jersey, and I'm right in the middle between New York City and Philadelphia. I'm like an hour away from both. Actually, probably a little bit less than an hour away from both. And I live uh, right by New Brunswick, which is a big hub city as well. You have Rutgers University, which is uh, the State University of New Jersey, uh, where um, James Gandolfini went to school as well. He just recently passed away, Sopranos, making New Jersey look great. <laughs> uh, but no, he was a great actor, and uh, Sopranos was a great show. May he rest in peace. And uh, Jersey Shore, people think of New Jersey, they think of the TV show Jersey Shore. Those people aren't from New Jersey. Uh, like 99% of those people are from New York. Uh, the one DJ dude, Polly D, with the crazy hair, uh, he's from Rhode Island. Uh, Snooki's from uh, New York. I actually used to live by Snooki when I lived in New York back in the day, but they're not from New Jersey. People, in the beginning of the show, they even say, oh, we're going on vacation to the Jersey Shore. People who are from New Jersey hate those kind of people that come from other places to basically just act a fool for the summer and act trashy and ruin the shore for us. Uh, anyways, what am I, I'm ranting like crazy. Uh, stores, um, you know, Best Buy, like I said, R1 is always depleted. Like if we get the special edition steel books, digi books, or whatever, we get like five in the store and they're gone like immediately. You have to get there like when they open up. Like you have to camp out for that. Uh, so I don't know, I do a lot of the shopping on uh, Amazon, but I've had an issue with Amazon recently, which I'm going to do a whole separate video for. Uh, but I do, I guess, a lot of online shopping. Um, yeah, there you go. There's no, you know, when I lived in Virginia, there was like pawn shop across the street from a pawn shop next to pawn shop. There's no pawn shops over here. There's nothing like that around here, which is crazy. Uh, what character would you want to be romantically involved with? Uh, again, like I said, uh, I did my. I'm gonna do a video coming up soon. Don't take my idea. It's not really my idea initially, but uh, I did a video a long time ago. Top five celebrity shacks, which was a video tag going around a while back, and um, I actually did it on my old channel and I re-uploaded it to my new channel. So it was like a really, really old video. Uh, people might have seen it on the new channel, like, oh, this is a new video. It wasn't. It was super old before that. But I'm gonna do another one of that, an updated one. Top five celebrity crushes um, instead of shag. I'm gonna say crushes. But my list has changed a little bit, but, you know, as far as people I wanted to be romantically involved with back in the day was Kelly Kapowski from Save by the Bell, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, and uh, later I found out she was super kinky, too. Brian Austin Green, I guess who was engaged to her, he totally aired their dirty laundry, and she was a freak. I'm down with that. <laughs> uh, but Penelope Cruz, uh, but I will say Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook would be a uh, character I would want to be romantically involved with. She was just a really strong woman. She was just really, uh, you know, she had some craziness going on in her life, but she was just really sweet, and I just loved that whole movie. I just, I thought that was a great movie. Um, also, I would say, before I mentioned Field of Dreams, the wife in that movie, uh, I really, like I said, she was strong, she was smart, she stood by her man, she believed in her man. It was just simple, down-home living, you know, taking care of the family, and, uh, you know, it's just, I just love that aspect, just a simple family. Finding a woman that can cook these days is also rare. I mean, I always say that bonus points if she can cook or is at least willing to try. Because not too many girls can cook or even want to try these days, so that's a big bonus in my opinion. I, I love a girl that can cook. So I was going to do this video unedited, but now I'm going to have to edit this video. Wah, wah, fail. Uh, I, apparently I just, you know, I was talking and I entered the video and then I realized at first I thought, you know, it didn't record because I looked at the videos like one second. I'm like, what? And I was like, oh. And then I looked back and I realized it filmed like 23 minutes worth. And then for some reason it cut out like the last minute. I have no idea why. I need to get a new camera. This camera is just balls. It's awful. Uh, but yeah, I was leaving the video unedited to show you why I do edit my videos because I ramble like a crazy person. I get off on tangents just you know, get into that, and a lot of times if I talk about a movie, I'm like, oh, this actor was creating this movie, and this, you know, on and on, kind of like that, uh, but, you know, yeah, now I'm going to have to actually edit, and I hate editing, that's why I kind of slack on doing movies, or doing videos on here, because I just hate the editing process, because I ramble like crazy, and, you know, every now and then you'll mess up a word or two, and I, I like to cut that out, and, you know, if you're thinking about something, there's like a pause, I don't like the awkward pause, I like to cut that out, I like to be real fluid. Uh, but anyways, you know, I really do like that this movie tag is going around and being interactive, and I like the community, everybody getting involved like that. So I tag everybody. I tag everybody. 
So if you want to do a video response or comment, leave them down below. It'd be great to see them. Uh, again, you know, uh, I don't. I left off. I don't know where I left off. I was talking about you know cooking or something like that. Yeah, if a woman can cook, bonus points. You know, I didn't get this way from hiking up a mountain. You know, I love to eat, and you know, I'm half Sicilian, so I, I love uh, cooking and you know homemade cooking. I really appreciate that. So if a woman is willing to at least try. All for it. It's a rarity these days to find a uh, to, these days to find a girl that can actually cook or willing to even try. And a couple of the movies that I think are very underrated are Judgment Night with uh, Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr., Jimmy Piven, Dennis Leary, Stephen Dorff. That movie was just really tense and very underrated. Um, Guillermo del Toro's uh, The Devil's Backbone. Really love that movie, and I'm sure it's not going to be underrated once Criterion Collection releases it because it's going to get tons of buzz. People are going to check it out. But that's one that I actually it's, it's funny. That's one of the movies that I've always wanted Criterion Collection to release. I've I should have done a video years ago, but I have a whole list of movies that. I, Criterion Collection should release. That was like a whole video topic. And Devil's Backbone was like one of the top ones. And so that's pretty cool to see that happening. I recently saw Lawless right here, which I actually loved this movie. I think this is actually a pretty underrated movie uh, dealing with uh, moonshiners in the Prohibition era. And I just really love the cast. I just thought it was a great movie. Uh, Attack the Block right here, I think is an underrated movie as well. Kind of an alien movie. It's a it's a British film, and I like the cast a lot as well. I like the lead actor as well. The one lead actor of the group of like kids, uh, kind of like the gang of kids, if you will. They kind of like the aliens kind of fall down, kind of like a bad neighborhood, and these gang of kids, like this group of kids, and you know they think they're kind of tough and stuff, and you kind of see them evolve throughout the movie as well. And you know, at first they were kind of like thugs and like picking on people, and then later they you know they've got some heart to them. Uh, but yeah, that's one that I think is underrated. Another one is uh, The Last Boy Scout, which is my all-time favorite action movie. Uh, has uh, Daniel Harris, a young Daniel Harris in it. Uh, has uh, Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans. Just a great cast. Great comedic moments in there as well. Uh, the Last Deduction as well. Um, those are just a few underrated movies. And uh, there's tons more, but just a few that I'm throwing out there. So let's see some video responses and comments. That'd be really cool. And uh, I love this movie tag going around. I'll leave the questions down below in the video description. And uh, let's see some video responses. Come on. It'll be fun. Fun times, I promise. Uh, but I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.